everyone, Jess here. Thank you for joining us for our first full week of Scrapping September. Today's prompt is long title. Now, what defines a long title? I don't really know. Katie and I decided that we'd sort of roughly say if it's more than six words, because I don't know about you, but I don't often write titles longer than six words, occasionally. But so we set ourselves the challenge of trying to come up with a title that was yet yeah, longer than six words long. And so my gorgeous boy here, he got a dragon um, face painted on his arm. He has been petrified of getting face paint uh, since the first time we saw it. So he's certainly not that little boy who wants his face painted every time there is a face painter at a party. Um, we have watched other kids do it. We have seen other kids get like Spider-Man and, you know, lions and tigers and all the things that he loves and just loves watching them, thinks they look awesome, but does not want a bar of it. And so, of course, we don't make him. But one day, his very best friend, Evie, got a beautiful butterfly on her face and you could see he really wanted to, but he really didn't. And so we almost forced him, I know that sounds really awful, to get his arm done. And he got a Spider-Man on his arm and he was so proud of himself. He ran around showing everyone his little Spider-Man face on his arm. He just thought it was the bee's knees. And so we were at the shopping center and there was a lady doing face painting. And he looked at me and he said, oh, can I get one? I said, of course, mate, of course you can. And he just went straight up to her and stuck his arm out and said, can I please get one? I'm like, what a transformation to go from having one time to now being brave enough and proud enough to go up and ask for it himself. Um, so we're still d certainly not at face painting, but care factor. Uh, and so, and he even changed his mind. He was going to just get another Spider-Man, so stick with what he knew, but he was reading because she had a list and obviously you can't read, but on the list there were pictures of what they look like. And so he was reading the list, the menu, and he chose a dragon this time, which I was also really proud of because he changed his mind and he picked something different. And oh, look at his face. Look how thrilled he is to have this beautiful dragon on his arm and so of course my good friend virginia over at the confessions of a paper addict cut shop she happens to have a dragon that is very similar to his arm so i had to have it and had to use it so i have back to this cut file the green paper is the gorgeous heidi swap paper there you can see the beautiful flower um navy blue flower that's the um the a side of this paper and I also used a little bit of Mimosa Sundays from Rosie's Studio Paper and then some beautiful vellum for the wings. So I did this layout a little bit backwards to how I would usually do a layout. Normally I like loosely put things down and then plan where I'm going to put the ephemera and then start sticking things on. But I kind of knew with this one I was a little bit limited to where my things were going to go. So I stuck on the dragon pretty much in the only place it could fit and also allow so much of that big um, four by six photo to fit. And then I snuck in the little photo in underneath the wing as well, because I really didn't want to put it in the top right hand corner above the dragon's head because it just didn't feel right. It looked like it would be floating if it was stuck up there. So once I placed those two photos and then the title had to go well i again didn't want it floating up in the top had to go down here sort of in between everything i figured i might as well just stick those on because i was really i didn't want to fill those with embellishments and then run out of a place to put my title so i'm sticking down the things that i know now i haven't used a four by six photo on a layout in quite a while uh i tend to just print all my photos in three by four size um for ease for putting them into my project life pockets and then i choose one of those that i really love the best or has the best story to make my 12 by 12 layout i don't necessarily choose the 12 by 12 layout first but as i was doing that i got to this one and thought 
three by four size is just not cutting it for this photo. It needs to be printed in um, four by six, uh, six by eight, whatever it's supposed to be. So that's what I did. I went and printed it again in the larger normal standard photo size, and I'm much happier with that. Now you'll probably notice when I'm putting on my title that a whole bunch of what's happening in that little three by four photo is getting covered. That's because I don't know the random lady that's painting the um, dragon onto Jack's arm, so she's not important to my story. What is important was um, how proud he was of doing it and the, the standing there and lining up and holding himself um, still to get that, that dragon done. So I didn't mind having um, a lot of her picture taken up by text and, photo, and you know the wings of the dragon and all of that. So my title, Brave Men Did Not um, Kill Dragons, They Rode Them. Uh, this is just a quote that I found online. I don't even know where it's from, to be honest. It doesn't specifically mean anything to me. I think it's from a book. Um, Aragon, maybe. Maybe Games of Thrones. I, To be honest, I don't know. It really doesn't mean anything to me, the actual quote and where the quote came from, which is a little bit random, but it was the words. The, the whole concept about being brave. Brave men did not kill dragons, they rode them. That's what I wanted. That's why I chose to have that. Um, I was originally going to have uh, the, the boy with the dragon tattoo, um, which is also really cool. But I decided for me, the aspect of the story was the brave, the being brave to do it, not that it was necessarily a dragon. So I really love, yeah, what what the sentiment of the quote is. Um, so then when I started embellishing, I found it really tricky. I have the Wolfpack collection, um, off to my right in the top of the screen there. Um, cause I thought there might be a few bits and bobs in there. It's about exploring the outdoors. It's about being brave, but I still really struggled with that. Um, I knew I didn't want a light and fluffy sort of girly collection for this particular layout. So I started to Aminah and of course spoke to my trusty sister and see she suggested clouds because you know dragons fly in the sky and then with the blue black ground clouds might look really cool so that's what I did I, I fussy cut and just drew myself some large and small clouds and cut those out um, they were getting a little bit they were a little bit too stark on the page because they're white so the contrast between them and the blue background was a little bit too sharp so I actually um distress the edges with my little mementos ink What's, is it mementos no it's brilliance um which you can just see sitting off there in the corner a teal color uh and that really made a big difference it just sort of softened the starkness of those clouds um against the background i cannot believe it has taken me this long to mention our special guests we are super super lucky to have a repeat special guest out today we've got laurie from Laurie's Crafty Corner. She has already joined us once on the very 1st of September doing the family prompt. So check out the description box down below where you will find a link to this Laurie's video for this prompt, long title, uh, but you will also see the playlist as well where you can go back and check out her family prompt video too. Laurie does really super creative, super bright and colorful, gorgeous, gorgeous layout. So definitely check her out. And we also have the amazing Becky from My Creative Life joining us today. And she also has a whole bunch of stuff over up on her YouTube channel. She has got some haul videos, some other hop videos, some art journaling, a whole bunch of different things. And she's got an exciting series starting in October that I highly recommend you go over and check out. She's got a bunch of playlists, her 100 Days Projects playlist, um, she's altered puzzle pieces. She's done a whole bunch of different things. So definitely head on over and check her out. Her details are also in the description, description box down below. Definitely jump over and check out the playlist as well because you can go back through and see everyone that has joined us over the last seven days and more and more and more to come. <laughs> I still can't believe it took me three quarters of the way through this video to mention her. Naughty, naughty. Um, so I'm really happy with how the clouds are sort of tying this layout in together. I think that was a really good look and I loved 
popping the moon up from the wolf pack collection up in that corner there that really helped fill that space and as I was mentioning the concept of anything up there would look like it was hanging is totally fine if it's clouds and a moon because it can be hanging up in the sky so that really worked for me um, and it was just a really easy way to embellish just hand cutting some um, paper clouds out of scrap bits of paper done and then I only just put a few other bits and bobs from the Wolfpack collection and that was it um, so there I am again distressing the edges of some more clouds uh, it just yeah really helped to make it pop so you can even see the back of those clouds it's literally scrap paper there is writing on the back so um, I also use a whole bunch of the stars from the Wolfpack collection and they're a mixture of both gold and silver um, the other gold stars that I'm using are actually the insides out of the cut file and then I hand cut myself the same yellow paper and stuck that on top. I hope that makes sense. So I just layered to the white, the white paper that was the inside of the cut file. I layered that with a hand cut gold, yellow mustard um, star and just stuck it on top. So it just looks like more cut file stars, but they're not. And that's about all that I did. I did a little bit down around the bottom of the photographs um, with actual embellishments from the Wolfpack collection, but not a lot. I used the two little sort of wolf prints. Um, I know they don't look like dragon claw prints, but uh, you get the idea. It, it mimics... It mimics what I'm trying to say, even though the footprints don't remotely look like dragons. I'm, I'm gonna play that. Sometimes that's what you need to do, I think. Um, it's a representation of what you're going for. It's not exact copy. And I think that is absolutely, totally acceptable when you're scrapbooking. Um, most people that flick through your pages do not cover your page with a magnifying glass and a fine tooth comb. They flash it. And so people will flash the concept of footprints down in that corner if they even notice them at all because they are quite tied in down there. Um, and that's the whole point, isn't it? You put these little bits, these little tiny things on your page just as almost subliminal messaging uh, of a good kind. <laughs> So I'm just about finished now, I think. Um, I'm really happy with how this page came together. Very minimal um, embellishing. Just lots of stars and lots of clouds to go with a really big title. And um, yeah, for me, a big photo. Like there's a lot of things on this page when you think about it. There's quite a large cut file with a big size photo which is just a normal standard photo with a big long title. There wasn't much room to do much else if you're gonna keep this as a single page spread. I certainly could have made it a double page spread, but that's not my style. My style is to just do single pages. So uh, I'm just about finished. I do use that paper a lot to help line up my um, thickers. I don't have a T-square ruler yet. I really need to keep a list of things as I am scrapping that I don't have that could be useful to give to Katie for my December advent calendar. <laughs> so the letters B, R and E are popped up because they're on top of my um, dragon, which I actually coincident, that was just a coincidence, but I'm really like, because sort of the most important word in the statement being brave, is is higher than every other word in the sentence uh, so they needed extra foam behind them so I'm just cutting really tiny little slithers of foam off my phone roll and I'm popping up the the a and the v in that word so that was just a really happy coincidence that those that one particular word is up above and up higher than the rest of the word but yeah I'm very very impressed that I managed that accidentally. So brave men did not kill dragons, they wrote them. Nice. Um, so then just a little bit of gold and black. I think I've got their color shine. This is the first time I have cut a layout in black. I've seen other people do it and I've loved the look of it. Ah, oh, sorry, got distracted. I didn't cut this in black at all. That's why the stars are white. I can't believe I didn't mention this earlier. 
this layer, this um, dragon cut file is cut out of white paper, but it didn't look right. I didn't like it. It was really stark. And when I backed the photo, it just wasn't working for me. Um, I actually had the wings backed in paper as well and ended up pulling that paper off and adding the vellum. You'll also notice there are some really, really, really thin sections of my cut file and that some of the stars look a bit wonky. Something happened in my silhouette, the mat moved or something. I just couldn't be bothered cutting it again and ran with it the way it was. Um, but yeah, so when I was looking at the cut file, I wasn't thrilled with the color it was. So I actually got a black Sharpie and colored in the outline of the entire part of the dragon in black and left the stars white. So that's something else you could try at home as well if you need to change the color of your actual cut file. So here are the close-ups. I'm really happy with how it looks. Um, it turned out really great, I think. Um, hopefully this inspires you to get out there and use something. You can see as well I used a biro pen, a black one, to draw scales onto the dragon as well. So yeah, I hope you like it. Thanks everyone and I will see you next time.